good morning. So my name is Rachel. I've been with March on Harrisburg since March on Harrisburg first became an idea uh, about four and a half, five years ago. I usually don't like to speak at these events, but as many of you may have read, we recently put out a blog about the past 25 years of advocacy that has gone into getting the gift ban where it is to today. And when I was doing that research, I came across an article from 1997, from the morning call. That's the year after I was born. Okay, so that legislature, this legislature right in here, they haven't even been able to pass this common sense, straightforward policy for almost 25 years. Here I am, I became a full human in those 25 years. <laughs> it's absolutely absurd that this bill that, you know, either everyone already thinks is law or knows needs to be law, isn't yet law. 25 years. When corporate Bill Mill Alec sponsors legislation, it gets fast-tracked through the House and the Senate and becomes law. I'm sure you're all aware of the study from Princeton that says that public opinion doesn't actually have an effect on policy. But the opinion of a wealthy elite and corporations, if they want a bill passed, they get it passed. And if they want a bill vetoed, they get that bill vetoed. 30 seconds. Now my work for anti-corruption began when I was just 19. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And while the process was incredibly painful and very expensive, the most frightening part is when I saw my first neurologist who, told, who gave me a prescription for opioids and told, them, told me I would be on them for the rest of my life. Now, I was a neuroscience major at the time, and I knew that opioids actually don't even treat the kind of pain that MS causes, nerve pain. So I was wondering why a doctor would be giving me this prescription for this highly addictive medication. I went home and I did some research, learned that Big Pharma associated with uh, opioids, they had lobbied, or they had bribed my doctor, and not only were they bribing my doctor, they were bribing the legislature. They were bribing the legislature to pass bills that benefited their own bottom line. Pennsylvania, for multiple years, was one of the, one of the number one states for the highest number of opioid-related deaths, for multiple years in a row. So we're talking about a legislature that's not just ignoring the problems of today, they are creating the problems of today. And we're the ones paying for them to do this with our taxes. Now my job at March on Harrisburg, I research these corruption connections. I organize and hear from people across the state about their connection to corruption. And I turn this information into bite-sized little bits of graphics and tweets to put out on our social media. And honestly, it pains me to turn these stories into little just one-liners because there are people across the state who are suffering at the hands of corruption. We hear from people across the state that their water has been poisoned from fracking, that kids in their communities are getting diagnosed with rare cancer because they live near fracking wells. And I put out a graphic that says, this legislature has taken nearly 70 million bribes since 2007 from big fracking. I'm sure you're all aware about the um, question on the ballot that wasn't able to get on the ballot about the Catholic Church priest abuse and making it so victims could seek justice. Now, it wasn't on the ballot this year because of a clerical error. But years before that, years, the Catholic Church lobbying arm spent millions of dollars bribing our legislature to make sure that bill never saw the light of day. Oh. Once again, we're talking about a legislature that's not just ignoring the problems, they're perpetuating them, they're creating them. Now I look behind me, I see all these amazing volunteers who have put in thousands of hours lobbying, thousands of hours organizing their communities, 
thousands of hours planning for a march, marching across the state, building community, because we are tired. We cannot be complicit while our legislature's greed affects us all. People who are here today know that we must hack at the root problem to take care of all the other issues that we face every day. Because the people in this legislature, they divide us. They divide us using race. They divide us into parties. They divide us by gender, by our sexual orientation, by our religion. They divide us by our culture. That's been a big one lately, hasn't it? Because they know that if we stand united against their greed, we will win. They should be ashamed. It's not just going to take one policy. It's not just going to take the gift ban. We have a whole platform, a money out people in platform. Money out that we are going to stay organized for. Because we will pass this gift ban and we will pass every single policy on that platform. Before I leave this microphone, I'm gonna say it one more time because oh boy, does it irritate me when I go to pay my taxes every year. And I know that I am paying this legislature's salary I'm paying their salary to perpetuate problems, to create more problems. I pay for their health care, their per diems. Yeah. They get cars. And on top of all that, they're being lobbied by corporations and getting gifts too. It is our right to be here today. It is our right to say, you have failed us for 20 years by refusing to pass this reform that we all agree on. That's right. right. Together, we will take our democracy where it's never been before. Right. Woo! Woo! Woo!